Welcome back to What You Will Learn. My name is Adam Ashton. Salam of Pagi Taman. My name is Adam Jones, mate. Uh, today 2016. We're doing a review, hey? The best of. <laughs> so we started, what, six months ago? Yeah. Done 32, 33 books, something like that. Mm. Cheeky interview in there. Mate, I thought there was some bloody good stuff that we've read throughout the year, so we just thought we'd get our the best bits. Yep. The Take out the best bits of the year and then uh, yeah, give it to the listeners and it's up yes. to you guys if you want to read the Read what we consider the best, uh, most impactful books or yeah, or events, I guess. Yeah, so we'll just do a, a, a quick summary about our top five, but there's heaps of honorable mentions. Yeah. So first episode, Anything You Want. I really liked how he said that at the start of your journey to success, at the start, say yes to everything. Take on whatever projects people throw at you, any job offers, take it all. And then as you start to achieve success, transition to what he calls hell yes or no. Mm. So if something isn't a really a hell yes, you're really super excited to do it, it's a no. Yeah. But So that's after you've, uh, yeah, you're starting to achieve. Well, man. Uh, another one for me would be Trump, which is just limited Trump down. So a lot of the book wasn't, wasn't the best book ever, but that's something that's stuck with me since then. So any project or any deal you go into or anything you're about to do, just... Uh, think of the down downside and limit that part, and then uh, and then yeah, you got a uh, no risk of losing in yep. anything. That's sick. And fuck, Trump did all right, didn't he? Trump did all right. Yeah. Worth listening to. <laughs> um, the magic of thinking big. I think it was just all about thinking bigger, taking more action, believing in yourself, killing fear, just doing more. Love it. Uh, richest man in Babylon. Just always invest ten percent, no matter what. And uh, yeah, yeah, everything you own that first ten percent, put it away. Yeah. Um, the compound effect which I really like, is all about taking small, regular, pod- positive changes and making those positive choices every day consistently, um, and it builds up over time. And uh, Way of the superior man, ejaculate up the spine. <laughs> That's a massive takeaway. <laughs> That's a big takeaway. You Mate, my that. other big takeaway was the babysitter effect. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, the old guy just found the 18-year-olds really attractive. It's, yeah. it's a thing. So we're not... We're not <laughs> it's a part of human nature, which is good. Uh, another one, uh, inevitable, and that's uh, all the technology that's come and everything's changed. Being the most exciting, the the virtual reality sex that is exciting. coming down, mate. That's that's exciting. VR's getting pretty good, isn't it, mate? You had a good uh, experience recently. Yeah, so I was just at uh, the local shopping centre last week, and then one of the girls puts the virtual reality headset on me, and it was I was on a roller coaster going up and down, and I was feeling sick. <laughs> and then the dude. Um, took that one off and put another one on me and I'm in the middle of the shopping centre and he's put me in a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> so I look around, there's about 12 strippers all around me dancing and stuff and um, yeah, I was getting a little bit excited <laughs> in the middle of the shopping centre so I had to get rid of it. So, it's good yeah. quality stuff. Though. It's real stuff. I've man. never done it. I thought I was there. Oh. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Did they touch her? Or no, no, mate. It was just, just, okay. just a visual I know sensation. If they touch you. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, all about the transition from employee to self-employed, to business owner, to investor, and the different um, financial flexibility and the money, time flexibility that comes with each yeah. stage. Yeah, great book. I think we both agree. One of the classics, probably for everyone to read. Yeah, definitely. Man, I like the e-myth. I didn't really like the whole book as a whole, but I did like the technician, the manager, and the entrepreneur. Yeah. And that if you're really good at doing something and you're a really good technician, don't start a business because yeah. you're going to end up doing shit that you don't want to do mm. on the business side of things. Another one, mate, 48 Laws of Power. Yep. Just start. Uh, so much. Going to be a prick sometimes. <laughs> and yeah, it's just an obvious way of how people get their power. It's yeah, great definitely. <laughs> um, tribes, Seth Godin. Everyone's got the opportunity. And if you're listening to this, you've probably got the obligation to, to lead a tribe. Yeah, spot on. And uh, yeah, mate, should we get in our top five? Any more um, honorables? Yeah, crush it. I don't, you didn't like it that much. I no. liked it. I thought it was. I thought it was good. It was a good way of um, building, I guess, an online brand. I thought. It was, I thought it was good, um, and obviously, like in half a second, we spoke to the great man, Matthew mm. Michael, which of course that was incredible. Uh, fucking clarity, desire, belief, knowledge, action. Yeah. And oh, mate, I reckon probably my favorite bit was what he said at the end. Is just the best time to start was yesterday. Yeah. It's probably too late for that. So the second best time is start today. Yeah. What a ledge. Absolutely love it, man. Well, let's get into our respective top fives. What's your number five? So, one number five, I think uh, we've already know what each other's one, but for me, it was <laughs> the, the Dip by Seth Godin. Yep. I'd have the Dip at even probably number three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. So, for me, the Dip, oh, we'll just talk about it now. Yeah. So, it's dip. basically when you start doing something, it, at the start, it's fun, and then it gets, uh, all of a sudden, it gets difficult, and that's where most people drop off. Mm. However, like there's 
the difficult part is your best friend because that's what where everyone drops off and that's where the scarcity is. Mm. Scarcity is at the end of doing the hard thing and that's where all the value is. So it's basically knowing when you're, when you're in a dip, understanding that and then pushing through, getting to the other side and then uh, that's where all the value is. Yeah, and that's um, it's in every project, everything you do um, that's worthwhile, there's going to be a dip. And the, the length and the depth of the dip is going to be different for everything. But say, for example, you decide to uh, write a book. So at the start, you're going to have some quick wins at the start. And you're going to might tell people and they'll say, oh, awesome, I'll buy a copy when it's ready. And you'll write one chapter and it'll be good. And then you've got the quick wins. But then it drops right off. There's a long dip then of the hard work. And that's where everyone quits. And that's why having a book, when you, if you get to the end and have that book, you get that exponential success at the end. Mm. Um, as long as there's no cul-de-sac or a cliff. They're the two negatives right there. That's right. Was the cul-de-sac was just flat all the way. Yeah. And the cliff, it dipped, but it never came back up. Yeah, it's spot <laughs> on. So just knowing... So it's not about uh, just trying everything. It's it's knowing what to quit. So what yeah. things in your life are shit and what things are just a dip. And then, uh, yeah, choosing the best to, to get rid of and choosing the right things to work on. Yeah. Good book. And it's applicable to everyone because everyone's... If you're going to do something that's important and worthwhile, you're going to go through a dip. Spot on, man. What's, uh, what's your number five? Uh, 48 Laws of Power is me. Yeah. And just... Uh, obviously, there's 48 different things, but being in the a big corporate bank at the time and seeing the different levels of power and knowing, I guess, how to deal with that, how to get around that, yeah, how to not um, piss off the people above you. I did that pretty poorly. <laughs> I pissed them <laughs> off a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, spot on. Yeah, so 48 Laws <laughs> of Power, I reckon, was good. Good read. Great book, man. Yeah. Fucking, fucking yeah. So my number four I'll get into is Limits to Growth. Yep. Another, not the best read in terms of like fluent, but what you learn in it, I think it's super significant. It probably Very important. Could, be, could easily be my number one in terms of how significant what you're reading is because the world right now, we're in a, in a collision course. Like our whole world uh, relies on, on this exponential growth and our capitalist economy mm. is relying on that. And at the moment, there's, there's definitely, after reading this, it becomes obvious that there is a lag between how the mm. world responds to our economy and, and it's going to get to the point where the world can't, um, kind of provide what our economy is asking for. So that's mm. that's the collision that's going to happen in our lifetime and there's heaps of problems that, that come with that. And uh, yeah, it's it's good to really know what's coming and, and how to best prepare and, and maybe how, how you can help as individuals to make this uh, this problem less yeah, that's good. Less effective. <laughs> yeah. Not important book. Not top five for me, but definitely important read. And Fucking important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, number four was Drive by Dan Pink. Mm. Uh, I just thought it was a really good model and very obvious, having read it, very obvious in the world. So he said that we started out as early human beings, just driven pure, purely by our bi- biological desires, hunger, thirst, and sex. And then when the, I guess, the industrial revolution came along, uh, managers wanted more and more out of their workers, so they went with motivation 1.0, which was extrinsic motivation, the carrot and the stick, so rewarding good things and punishing bad things that they wanted. Uh, but now we're saying we're seeing that it doesn't work so much, and sometimes it has the opposite effect. So we've got motivation 2.0, which is intrinsic motivation, which is all about autonomy, so having autonomy and choice of your what we yeah. five T's, time, task, technique, technique. Uh, yeah, like, read those ones. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fine. Too. But yeah, so having that, that that freedom and autonomy of what you do, having mastery, so the ability to improve and get better and master it, and then purpose. So yeah, having a bit of meaning, a bit of purpose behind yeah, it. Phenomenal. So yeah. that yeah, motivation two two point oh, pretty yeah. fucking good. It would help uh, if you read that book. It'll help you choosing what next step to go in if you wanted a, a new choice in career or yeah. or life direction reading that book will definitely yeah give you give you help yeah so for me number three was dip we already spoke about it what yeah. was your number three uh elon musk Ooh, yeah so another so reading the whole book there was one huge learning one theme i got throughout the whole entire book which i'll take away is that we like time is no excuse for us if, mm. if anyone out there listening says no i don't have time to do that project no i don't have time to do this or that mm. Pick up Elon's must book or, or read what he's done and think, fuck. <laughs> At the end of the day, we've got the exact amount of time yeah. as Elon Musk in the week. And yeah. what we might be complaining about in a job or fucking whatever, he's at the same time building $3 billion companies, changing the course of history, yeah. solving the world's <laughs> uh, energy world. problems and looking to go to Mars. Yeah. And it just baffles me that he's got the same amount of time as me. Yeah. So that just taking that in, it's just 
kind of eliminated that excuse from my life. It's yeah. just been huge. Every single person's got the same amount of time, but some people use it a bit more effectively. Yeah, that's, that's right. Mate, that might be a good uh, segue. I think our number twos are both the same, the four-hour work week. Yeah. Which was, uh, it, it, he calls it, a, it's about 10xing your per hour output. So not just working four hours a week, but having the ability to do 10 times as much stuff. Yeah. So you do in four hours what other people would do in 40. Yeah. So I guess the keys to that was effectiveness. So picking the right things to do, not doing unnecessary, irrelevant things. And then efficiency, which was being good at it, doing it quickly, doing it well. That's right. So finding out in your life what you're doing for like work for work's sake. You're just mm. doing flandering work and you, you feel making yourself feel like you're doing something productive because you're busy. Mm. But you're really... You know, why? Why are you doing that? Like, what's the fucking point? So, yeah. And uh, so he says, one big thing from the book for me was ask ask for forgiveness and mm. not for permission. Mm. So do what you want to do. And then uh, say if you're in, in corporate, you're, you've got a boss, do what you think's right and it's going to be right for the company maybe. And then yeah. and if it's a little bit out of the box, then yeah, ask for permission later. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you ask for permission first and they say no, you're in a you're in a pretty tough spot. Yeah. Whereas if you just do it, as long as you think this is right, it's effective, it's exactly what you should be doing, go for it. So yeah. Well, man. Love it. So, yeah. What? And you also went into, obviously, that step-by-step of how to build an online business, which is pretty good. Yeah, cool. Good tools, yeah. And the disillusionment of, uh, of retirement. So, mm. I love that concept, how, you know, most people think they're going to work really hard in their life just to get to the pot of gold at retirement so they can finally mm. be there yeah, and relax and chill out. Mm. But like, why, why the hell wouldn't you just go do something you want to do anyway the whole time Yeah. so then you don't have to retire because yeah, you're just exactly. doing what you want to do in the first place. It's like just such a, <laughs> such a basic yeah. uh, concept that we're, Makes just, a lot of sense, we're yeah. just ignorant of it until we come across a book like this yeah. so, or if Absolutely. you listen to this. <laughs> Absolutely. And number one, I think we're both the same again. Yeah. Tony Robbins unleashed. Make your move! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Mate, Tony Robbins uh, unleashed the power within. All the hype from everyone listening to this probably heard people come from this, this seminar. Yeah. It's fuck, it is what it's hyped up to be yeah. and times 10. It's yeah. incredible, isn't it? At the same time, I can see a lot of people that would go and be really motivated for a day or two and then yeah. drop right back to where they were. Mm. But yeah, as if you can consistently do what is taught there. It's yeah. fucking phenomenal. He's definitely... So the whole thing of the uh, the course, the biggest takeaway for me, it was like he anchored some beliefs in, in me mm. or something, I don't know, which has kind of stuck with me and I think will stay forever. And then, yeah, will definitely yeah. make me get more out of my life, I think. Basically, as a quick reminder, it was like 50 hours of absolute mayhem yeah. over four days, just craziness, crazy dancing, walking on fire. Smashing fears, but just about being more, doing more, achieving more. Yeah. 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 Giving more. Giving more. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was um, fucking good. Absolutely phenomenal, mate. So, um, yeah, it's probably, and I think we mentioned this in the podcast, it's almost counterproductive us talking about it because it's just, yeah. it's that good and that just out go. there and wild. Just, just, just it's go yourself. It's not cheap to go. No, nah, yeah. it's not cheap, but, but time, yeah. the value of it just is hundred times what you pay, you know, a thousand, a couple of thousand or whatever it is, I don't know. Yeah. But just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's true as well. What's on for two thousand seventeen, mate? Oh mate, we've got uh we've got some biggies coming. Got some big books, I think. Yeah. So we've, <laughs> we've enjoyed doing this and uh yeah, I think we've made a bit of segue since our first potty. That was yeah. pretty uh, <laughs> pretty rubbish. But... <laughs> was it? Yeah it was. Oh, it was shit. pretty rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's improved a bit. But yeah, so we'll keep doing a book a week. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, keep listening and uh yeah. Thanks for listening. If I, anyone, anyone got any recommendations for 2017, mm. please shoot us a, a message or an email. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I think we've, we've got the email now, podcast at whatyouwillearn.com. Yeah. So shoot through any recommendations and we'll chuck them on the list. Yeah, yeah we'll definitely, uh, definitely reply to your emails. Yeah. All right, man. So we uh, review this, the song review. Oh, are you going to do all the songs? Should we do a song? Yeah, let's do, let's do yeah. a song. A, yeah. Yeah, let's sing it. A drum, 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 the drum, drum, but I know! <laughs> a rubber to the side. <laughs> one pink in the stink, one pink in the damn pink stink, yep. Ejaculate off the spot. Ejaculate. Ejaculate. Yeah, yeah. Virtual reality sex ejaculate. Oh, 
Only half a second, baby girl. <laughs> Make you move! Make you move! <laughs> what a year, motherfucker! What a year, what a year! Crack a beer, motherfucker! Yeah, oh! Motherfucker! Stick it in, stick it in, stick it in! Yeah, stick it in! Crush <laughs> it! <Russian. laughs>